I'd like to welcome you this afternoon to our webinar, SAP Master Data Governance, Process First, Sustaining Your Business Case for Data. Today's speaker is John Ferrioli. John is a Senior Vice President at Utopia and leads our Master Data Solutions practice. So John is basically responsible for making sure that clients have the knowledge and best practices they need to deal with data throughout its entire life cycle at their company. As many of you are probably aware, John's a subject matter expert for enterprise data management, master data management, master data governance, and BI and business analytics solutions. Uh, he combines a great deal of experience um, from the past and his years at SAP, along with his years working and consulting with clients at Utopia, and is well thought of in the master data governance world. All that to say, he's the perfect person to present our information today. So John, with that, I will hand it over to you. Great. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate the uh, introduction and for uh, supporting us today. Um, so good afternoon and good morning. I'm John Ferrioli, as, as Terry mentioned, and I'm going to walk you through a presentation on best practices for implementation of SAP Master Data Governance, or MDG. really starts with the process first, and then we'll also talk about establishing and sustaining the business case for data and how MDG supports that. From an agenda perspective, what I wanted to share um, first and foremost is an outliner. And so SAP Master Data Governance, right? it's an enabling technology. It's all about process automation. But you have to orchestrate your business process for data creation. And so having data governance policies, having those processes well-defined, that's the key. And that's the most important element, one of the most critical elements um, for leveraging the solution. Now, in this presentation from an agenda, we'll talk about best practices. We'll talk about the Utopia methodology for implementing MDG. And then how, how to get a business result uh, from the solution itself. So we'll talk about case studies, how it's leveraged, and then ultimately um, mapping that into your business case. From a solutioning perspective, uh, one of the important things to consider is MDG is only as good as your process. So while there's a ton of out-of-the-box content, it's still about orchestrating your workflows and your validations. Um, what I wanted to do to help qualify a little bit about you know, why we're giving this webinar today is tell you a little bit about Utopia. Now, Utopia has been in business for the last 10 plus years, and we are a global services and consultancy focusing on delivering data to insights. And what that translates to is that when you think about reporting and decision making and actionable insights, they are all dependent upon the reliability and integrity of the source. Right? So garbage in, garbage out. Making decisions from a flawed information base is a recipe for failure. And we believe that data is the foundation to that information uh, management roadmap. So we help customers today help them drive their revenues, help them optimize their business processes, achieve uh, reporting integrity that you can trust and bet your job in uh, against. And from a solutioning perspective, we run the gamut from data governance and strategy through analytics strategy, um, data integrity initiatives, as well as big data, predictive analytics, and even outsourcing of the data management function. Um, but enough about Utopia. Let's talk about why we're here. We believe that there are intrinsic connection between data integrity and process optimization. So I wanted to share with you just kind of a, a bit of a background on what we're hearing from our customers today. This feedback is actually from a, a large global um, oil and gas company. And they had a major initiative around their supply chain. So when we asked them what are the business drivers, right, not what, what their data requirements are, but first, what is the process? that you're trying to optimize. We heard things like procurement, uh, optimization, leverage spend, uh, optimizing their inventory levels, being able to trade spares uh, between their plants and refinery. They want to drive down their costs, improve lead time for supply chain, and, um, and, al and align materials and production uh, teams to improve the customer service experience. Naturally, they wanted better forecasting, better planning. Uh, they, they wanted to make better business decisions, insightful decisions. 
and they wanted to improve their sales efficiency, right? So a consolidated view of the customer. They wanted to do better territory management and analytics, 360 degree profitability analysis on their customer. And so with all that being said, they wanted to leverage data as an asset and have repeatable frameworks to leverage these practices across not just material master, but across customer, vendor, uh, financial, and any other custom objects. And so it was very important for us to work with them and understand their business drivers first, and then map that to the data and how data is created with consistency, right? Process orchestration with consistency. And that's where it kind of led us to MDG. So what I wanted to share was just a little bit of our methodology. And this is going to be really the heart of the presentation is to outline what are the key elements and key considerations when you're implementing SAP's master data governance or MDG scenario uh, solution. Well, first and foremost, we require and would recommend strongly that you start with a strategy. And a strategy doesn't have to be what are you doing for the next five years. It could be what are you doing for the next you know, five months. But it is directionally a roadmap as to where you're going, where the sponsorship is coming from, what the vision is, what problems you're solving, and who the people involved, right? What's the roadmap and, and how are you going to execute? We also look at key considerations around the governance organization, right? These are the owners of the data, but ultimately these are the folks that uh, establish data policy. They establish how data is going to be maintained, and they monitor and they manage this. So these are the practitioners for data governance. So these are kind of the cornerstone of, of what you want to start with before you even think about implementing SAP MDG. And then another key element is defining and developing your data standards. So we'll talk about that first. So lots to be considered when implementing SAP MDG, but most importantly, let's set up the foundation. Let's set up the, the underpinnings uh, for the solution. Right? Now, let's, I want to share some leading practices. You'll notice in the headline it says MDG and EDLM. Well, at Utopia, EDLM, uh, just to give you a new enact, acronym, is Enterprise Data Lifecycle Management. So we view data as an asset from its point of creation through its end of life. And what's critical about that is you have to think about MDG saying, well, what's my retention policy for the vendor master? Right? How long do we value the importance of a vendor or a customer or a material in our SAP or even non-SAP systems. So that life cycle dimension can be incorporated by establishing retention policy early on and then having MDG enforce that policy, right? which then is later integrated with, a, with an archiving or, or a decommissioning solution. But right off the bat, and I'm sure everyone's heard this before, you want to deliver small incremental projects but are mapped to business value. right? Show the value up front. Get people on board. Have them understand that you've got a plan, a charter, a roadmap, directionally, right? And that it's repeatable from one object to the next. The data model is key to MDG. Now, the nice part is MDG inherits the data model from SAP ECC, as well as any extensions that you might have upon that model. Uh, but understanding how that data is going to be consumed how it will be distributed, how it uh, is defined within your systems of record is critical to MDG. So it leverages, MDG leverages the SAP data model, but it's really understanding the entity relationships, how the data is consumed, how it's distributed, how it's reported against. The roles, the resources, and change management. MDG is process optimization and process automation. So change management is a really important factor and, and something to be considered. And then view data lifecycle management as a lifestyle change rather than a crash diet. Right? It's a shift in how you view data, how you value it, and who the stakeholders are in contributing to its care and feeding and ultimately how it's created consistently. Um, highlighted below is that the most critical component of this initiative is to sustain the program. Right? Not a project, but a process 
by linking data to your business processes, your business value, and reporting integrity. And that even extends through big data, right? Analytical insight and predictive analytics. You have to have a solid integrity of data to start with, if you will, uh, in the words of one of our, our, our customers, they say, you have to get little data right first before you get into big data. And we, we support that. Now, in the viewpoint of establishing a strategy and a roadmap, that's one of the core pillars, right? The roadmap is the basis for a multiple year investment, right? It's not just put in the tool and you're done. The, the tool, SAP MDG, the enabling technology is the easy part. It's the process. It's the people behind it. So those resources, the project charter, right? Being able to tell people no, right? This is our focus. This is what we're achieving. This is our goal. They're all aligned to the business initiatives. You have a clear direction and strategy, and you have actionable steps with sponsorship from the business. And you can, you can cost benefit this. You can tie it to a, a multiple year uh, rollout. But you at least have a, a good and clear direction and strategy as to where you're going and how you're going to get there and who the team are and, and, frankly, what does that cost to get there. Most folks will take a look at MDG and say, OK, here's the tool. And what does the tool do? The thing is, who's going to manage it? Who's going to maintain it? Who's going to be responsible for the standards? Who's going to be responsible for the policies? And that obviously maps back to the data governance organization or the data management organization, whatever it's being called. It's important to have a good balance between business and IT. IT to enable business to establish policy and help enforce it. Now, I'm certain that every consultancy has some variation of a maturity model. We do as well at Utopia. And what's important is to scorecard and measure yourself, to set benchmarks that you can measure over time, not just a one-time measurement, but measuring the effectiveness of the process and the effectiveness of the team and their ability to execute, right? Because at the end of the day, the tool automates your policies and your processes. It's important to appreciate, though, where you are. And that maps to the tactics that the data organization and the business can support. Do they have the time? Do they have the bandwidth? Do they have the organizational maturity to execute? So whether or not you are at beginning stages of data management and data governance, or a mid-tier as you mature. I'm using an analogy of football, right? If you're a peewee football player versus a high school player, all the way through an NFL level of, of being able to execute. The plays in which you call, the tactics in which you call, have to be mapped to your organization's ability to execute. And through analogy, it's hard to, to give out an NFL level of complexity playbook to a peewee football team. You might be playing the same game. You might be doing the same data uh, objectives. But your ability to execute is based on your team. So scorecarding and being able to understand your organization across multiple dimensions is absolutely a best practice. And I would submit to you a precursor to implementing MDG. Because you need to understand what are your as is and to be data management processes. It's important to understand right, what the governance body looks like and how they're going to focus on the tasks at hand. Who are the data stewards? For example, who creates company code when creating a new customer? Who inputs the tax ID? What about the address validation? What about the credit? So all that process orchestration and business control have to be measured and understood. And what we do is through our maturity assessment, to understand your current status, to benchmark on how you can get to the, the desired target, and by the way, what's the economic value of getting to that next level of excellence? Why should people care? And so that is the effort that's put in, which is how do you get to the next level? And this methodology and, and, and maturity assessment can be reused time and time and time again over time to measure and manage your organization and focus on the key areas that need the most attention. That frankly will give you the best economic output. Now, I want to share with you from one of our clients an organizational structure. 
Now, this is based on a lean data governance model. There's, there's multiple dimensions of governance, right, and how organizations are set up. This is just one. But what I did want to point out is that we differentiate in two distinct areas. One is at an enterprise focus in gray, and in below, an operational focus on the bottom half of the screen. So enterprise level, operational, right? Uh, who, at the enterprise level, these processes around what's the governing architecture? Who authorizes the standards? What about accountability and monitoring service level agreements on performance and operational efficiencies? by implementing MDG, right? Can you turn a material master that takes you 30 days to create a material master and then make that less than 10 days, less than five days, right? How is that being managed and measured? Who are the data trustees? Are they de defined right in the center of the screen? Are they defined by object type, by product, by material, customer, vendor, plant? Or is it by business process? For example, who owns data for the order to cash process. And that includes multiple objects. So designing this really has to be structured to what's going to work best for your company. And at, a, at an operational focus, we're, we're looking at things that hands-on, right? Creating a new record, maintaining the record, the validations, the approvals, all the things that MDG um, automates have to be defined first. So that framework that I showed you is really important to get that strategy piece done, the roadmap, the data governance organization, right? And defining that organization as to what will work best. And here's a quick example. You have um, architecture, standards, organization, the processes, the maintenance, quality, all those elements. Well, all those elements come together uh, from a style which says, is it centralized? Is it decentralized? Is it federated? Different objects may have different governance options. For example, financial objects may be managed totally centralized, right, because of the, uh, the risk, the management, the uh, compliance drivers. Whereas material master for distributed plants, and particularly like MRO spares, might be federated, right? That's a, a blend of uh, decentralized and centralized and, and, and federated, right? Um, so Understanding which governance option for which object is key as well, because what are you going to automate with MDG? You need to understand how that's going to flow. Finally, across multiple categories, one size does not fit all. I think we all know this intrinsically, but you may have a system that's set up today that is centralized, and as you mature or extend your data governance, it may be more decentralized. Right? Stewardship may go from siloed lines of business to an enterprise-wide stewardship. Right? You have to consider global data versus local data. So there's a key consideration for all these drivers and how you structure and stand up MDG. And then lastly, data standards. Right? This is the enforcement of your policy. So I saw this the other day on the web, and I thought I'd bring it forward. But you have aspects of soda versus pop versus coke. And depending on which part of the country you're in, uh, the legend is, is that the aqua blue is soda and the yellow is pop and then the uh, purplish is coke. How you describe things, whether it's a, uh, a sheave or a pulley at your plant level, right? Do you call it a sheave or do you call it a pulley? Is it a ball bearing or is it a bearing ball? Well, those definitions, those standards, how do you abbreviate St. John Street um, is, is interesting. Abbreviate for me Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola Company, Coca-Cola LTD, LTD with a period, Coca-Cola Inc. All of those factors drive your standards. So establishing standards is exactly what MDG is going to enforce. And so having those standards defined are, are critical. As we move on in the method, we talked about strategy, we talked about governance, and standards. Now we're into the design phase. So this is kind of the blueprint aspect of it, where you're looking at your global data flows, right? your as-is-to-be processes, how business rules and process flows are a key factor in what's going to be enforced, validations and approvals, and service level agreements report tracking. 
take a look at the business drivers and map that to your process flow. If you're trying to optimize order to cash, right, you need to understand the business needs and the desired outcomes of the finance organization and the sales organization. If you're trying to reduce inventory, um, you're going to have different business needs from different stakeholders in the organization. Next, you want to analyze that information. You want to have alignment with the business. We'll talk about how Information Steward is used to help you illustrate the business case and the business impact of data by showing it to them, to the stakeholders, as evidence versus anecdotes. So you want to analyze and you want to approach the business folks to help make your case and show those, those challenges in the data structure like incomplete records or duplicate records, and say, we have to stop this behavior in the data because it's affecting order to cash. It's affecting our inventory. It's affecting our procurement. And then ultimately, the implementation is, how do you get the business stakeholders to buy in and stay with you during this journey? Right? So our approach is to look at these three primary, there are many, but these are three primary uh, approaches, right? The business environment. Look at the organizational structure, right? Who owns MRO spares, material repair overhaul, spares for the plants and the refineries and the mills? What locations do you have? Do you have a global view of the data or a regional view, right? Or a local view? What about response times? From a business process perspective, we look at what is the process model? What, what is the as is and to be processes of how data is created today? Who's involved with that activity? Right? Who are the individuals? And the third is the business activity. Right? This is all of the interfaces, the inputs and outputs of the data flow. Right? These are the approvers who validate and who ensure, along with MDG from an automation perspective, how business rules for data are enforced in a consistent manner. Right? You bring all three of these together you're really covering a very important piece of the implementation. Now, this slide is courtesy of SAP, and I'm going to walk you through a quick scenario. But in this scenario, you have a business user right, in purchasing department of an engineering company. And she wants to add a new supplier, right? and she wants to order some samples. So she's talked to sales, she's talked to the procurement team, and she wants to put a purchase order into SAP ERP. So she needs to make sure that she's not going to create a duplicate record. Well, one of the things MDG does is leverage SAP data services to make sure there's an ex that there's not a duplicate record. She wants to make sure the data is available and it's correct. Right? So data services is leveraged within MDG to make sure you're not creating a duplicate record. But what's really important from a best practice, make sure you clean your data first. That way, if someone looks for, for an item or a material mass or a supplier, you don't see 55 Coca-Cola companies, Coca-Cola, 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 Inc. You don't see 55 ball bearings bearing ball, right? So data services can be used to clean the data first and MDG make sure you don't add bad data to the system. The net net is that when she inputs key information about you know, the new procurement requirements, she's going to reuse the business logic from SAP. She's going to integrate external services. She'll be able to uh, leverage data enrichment like Dun & Bradstreet or other third parties or other data sources to make sure that the content is fulfilled. If Mary, the business user, is procuring a new part, she'll work with engineering, she'll work with the people at the plant, and they will contribute dimensions, specifications, uh, core requirements for what she's procuring. And then that information can be replicated to non-SAP and SAP systems, so you have consistency. And you have collaboration across the suppliers so that you can fulfill that order. Right? So the collaboration and the request for the new supplier is sent to other folks in the organization. If it's a material, it follows the same pattern. But those folks have to be identified, and that's really the lesson. If you have MDG and you don't define these things, MDG will, will not be automating your process because the process is incomplete. So once that data is complete, once the contributing parties and third-party systems fill in the blanks, 
ensure that the standards are enforced, ensure that the business rules are enforced. Right? You have the activation within the business system, and then you can execute in an efficient manner. So NDG ensures process automation for data creation with, with integrity. For each phase, strong stakeholder invo involvement is really, really critical. For each activity, you want to have those stakeholders from the business, from IT, aligned with you, and also understanding, I can't execute my business process if I don't have the right data in the right format. In other words, supply chain systems will send the wrong product to the wrong location with the wrong tax ID on the invoice, and you'll wonder why the customers aren't satisfied and they're not paying their invoice. If short text and long text description are not aligned, you'll, you may have confusion in your, in your distribution or with your customer acceptance. So get, building the business case and showing how that maps to the process automation and orchestration is a key factor in how NDG optimizes SAP. And all of these things you know, should be thought out and thought, uh, thought through all the way through your, your final prep and go live. Because you want, you want participation. But people have to see the business value in order to participate. So the last phase, right? we've set up strategy. We've set up the governance and stewardship, the, the people who are, who are establishing the policies. You have a roadmap. Your standards are defined, right? How do you abbreviate St. John Street? The design, the as is to be, the business uh, process flows, the business rules, and the validations and the approvals are set. And now you can track performance with service level agreements. Now you're into deployment. And so deployment phase says, we have our blueprint, we have our design, we know who the players are, we know what our processes are, let's roll out the solution. And this is where MDG really, really is, is a treat because it's, it's based on the SAP ECC structure. It's written in ABOP. It uses the SAP uh, Business Rules Framework Plus. It uses the SAP Common Workflow. Uh, it leverages data services for quality and existence check. So it's a, it's, it's, even though it's a relatively, you know, last three years new solution, um, SAP is very much behind the solution, but on top of it, um, it's based on ABA. It's based on the, on the workflow. It's based on the validations. And so now your deployment is relatively easy uh, comparative to getting all those things up front, and that's the key lesson. Now, from a key technical components of SAP MDG, one of the things we, we talked about earlier, I talked about earlier, is the data model realization, understanding the workflow definition, the user interface, and then mapping that to the process steps. The data distribution schema and integration with your target ERP, because it can go to SAP, but also non-SAP as you distribute this uh, master data to your consuming applications. Security and authorization is also a key, uh, uh, key, key aspect here, and it will invoke the ECC security and authorization, and then the initial loading of, uh, of data into the MDG hub. Because MDG can be, or ECC, is your master data repository. right? So you're ensuring that standards, rules, policies are enforced consistently. So those are some very key technical components when implementing MDG. And number one, again, is, is that data model realization, which does come from ECC, but it's also a key piece which can be extended to fit your specific business needs because it's not uncommon to have Z tables or extensions. Okay, process flow. Talked about this a little bit before, but the key to this slide is really illustrating and defining the pro process flow. Uh, it's important architecturally to work with IT so that they say, okay, you're rolling out SAP um, order to cash. Well, What's the process flow for you know, a, a call center? What's the process flow for setting up a new customer? Have that alignment between the business process and the IT organization when they're deploying the apps and map in the data model. And in this case, I want to highlight that you're going to be looking at your country data stewards, 
your country-based approvers, regional approvers, and global data governance organization. Know their roles, know their responsibilities, how they contribute, and what value, most importantly, what value they get out of the data once it's cleansed, standardized, and ensuring that it's consistent. What's important about maintaining the business case okay, are, li are lined up on this slide. You want to have those measurable goals. You want to have an alignment between business and IT and set expectations. right? Senior management buy-in. I'm going to get to that in a second. Everyone knows you need senior management buy-in. I'm going to talk about how you actually get it. And then ensuring those business goals and functionality and then measurement and management. Right? The methodology that I just shared with you can be reused and repeated for financial object, for customer object, for material, for vendor master, for any custom object down the line. But it's important that from a process perspective, you're getting that process optimization. So that's the first half of the presentation, or I would say maybe 70% of the presentation. The next half, or the next <laughs> remaining time that I have, I'm going to focus in on sustaining the business case and the business value and economic impact of data. And I'll start with a little bit of humor, right? And I think we all like Dilbert, but you know, whenever you have folks who don't understand how critical data integrity is, consider this cartoon, right? The message here is that there's no business intelligence without data integrity. You can have reporting, but it won't be valid. You can have predictive analytics, but it, it won't give you the insight required, the actual insights required, if the core referential master data is suspect. So I'll give an example around the customer master, right? Now, whenever we think about building a business case for data, consider these benefits. The customer master, if you do it right, right, you can get global credit accuracy, you can maximize your loyalty, you can reduce day sales outstanding, and I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Customer profitability analytics, territory management, 360 degree view of the customer, being able to cross sell and cross reference to your customer base, better targeted marketing campaigning, understand the impact of the customer to the business. Right? And, the, and if, the, if you have duplicate customers, if you have inactive or invalid customers in your production systems, if you have erroneous tax IDs or the wrong address, you're not going to have customer insight. You're never going to be able to achieve these things. So let me show you how we help you build a business case at Utopia. We obviously start with a corporate vision at the top. And one of the competitive edges is operational excellence for this particular company. Now. The process around that they want to optimize is order to cash, which is, OK, I get an order, <laughs> and someone's going to pay me in a timely manner. The problem is, is that if you send out invoices that are erroneous, or have the wrong tax ID, or the, or the wrong bill to ship to address, or your supply chain ships the wrong product to the wrong location, or the customer orders one thing from your web catalog, but they get something different, that's a problem. And I think when your invoices are wrong, you're not getting paid. And often what happens is people within accounts receivable, within the CFO's office, have metrics around operational excellence and reducing day sales outstanding. Well, those factors and those business drivers are corrupted by data. So looking at that business process, SAP order to cash, you really got to look at that foundational master data. You're going to take a look at the 80% of the business process, right, which is master data. And so you want to reduce day sales outstanding. Just reverse engineer into the order of the cash process. And what you'll find is, is that at the core, at the foundation, is your master data. And if that data is suspect, if it's corrupted, if it's not maintained consistently, year over year over year, order to cash processes, and the data that's being consumed right, will corrupt that process. And for large corporations, one day, day sales outstanding can translate literally to tens of millions of dollars in operating capital for the CFO or people in the financial department 
meeting their, their objectives, right? So interrogating the data, understanding at the foundation its, its limitations, correct tax IDs, amending bill to ship to. Often that's done when your accounts receivable people call the client and say, why haven't you paid the invoice? Then they give an excuse or they give the facts, tax ID is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And that's amended at a transactional level. What we're talking about is the ability to do it at a master data level so that you don't repeat that process the next time you send another invoice. And that's how you build a business case. You show the CFO, in this case for order to cash, how he or she can reduce their day sales outstanding. I'll give you another example, this one about inventory optimization and procurement. In this case, this is a stock analysis report out of SAP. And what you see are eight functionally equivalent bearings, ball bearings used in plant maintenance. We all know, or most folks know, in the manufacturing uh, landscape, is that reactive work orders are six times more expensive and preventative maintenance. So you want to have the right product ready to go, the bill of material articulated and complete. The problem here is that they're using the same functionally equivalent bearing eight different times. And they're procuring it from, it should be eight different vendors, but in this case, one of the vendors is blank. So you've got a good price, $3.09, but the problem is, even if you want it, you can't find who you get it from. One of the other considerations is the planned delivery times, so a very wide variation on planned delivery times. Further, one of the vendors, Brooke Hansen, is selling them the same functionally equivalent part, once for $2.54 and the other for $4.67. What's interesting is that this company is actually buying more of the more 30 versus 3 of the more expensive part, and I would argue that they're doing that because the planned delivery time is less, even though it's more expensive. So looking at the data translates to a business case. Why buy the same functionally equivalent, in this case, SKF ball bearing, for $2.54 through $19? for the same functionally equivalent part. That's a 700% premium. So if you can go back to the plant folks and say, we have data issues, right? We've got duplicates, we've got inconsistencies, we've got blank fields, right? That's translating to an inability to have inventory optimization, an inability to leverage spend globally, an inability to have strategic sourcing, right? The, the tie-in, the inextricable link between data and business process and helping the organization meet their corporate goals is massive. We just have to expose it. So one of the ways we expose it is with SAP Information Steward, which, again, by the way, integrated fully with SAP MDG. So you can profile and analyze. You can show the blanks. You can show the data metrics that you're trying to measure with information steward, and then incorporate that, this knowledge, into MDG. You can say, we're having problems with data here. We want to make sure that this process is followed better. MDG, take it away. We want to make sure that the rule is followed. Here you see conformity to standards here in orange or in red is less than our threshold for quality, our accuracy is less. The completeness of the record is good, but the other metrics are poor. So MDG, with this insight, can tackle and be focused on addressing those challenges like conformity to standards or completeness or the accuracy. Accuracy, an example, tax ID says 999999X, right? It's, it's, val it's valid. The, the, the completeness is there. The tax ID is filled up but the accuracy is, is suspect. So getting the tax ID right means people pay their invoices in a timely fashion, one of the factors, right? But that's how you get the CFO to care. In closing, one of the most critical components, I'm going to read this, but one of the most critical components of a successful MDG or Enterprise Data Management Initiative is sustaining the program by linking data 
to your business processes, your business value, your reporting integrity, and ultimately your, your if you will, big data, your analytical insight. Our objective today was to cover a methodology which is repeatable based on a framework that can extend for other objects and really incorporates the people and process dimension and the key components for success when implementing MDG. If you capture all those elements together first and you define that roadmap, then implementing MDG and its execution, the way it will support the process for data creation with integrity, will be, a, in our estimation, a very successful program. Not a project, but a program. Thanks, John. Can you address whether or not MDG provides a master data repository that is sort of the master of master data? Sure, good question. So I talked all about MDG and how MDG does this process orchestration for creation and all these things. And then the question is, where does it go? So the answer of where it goes is into SAP ECC. Right? So SAP ECC becomes your central repository for data. It is the version of the truth coming directly out of ECC. Now, in a non-SAP landscape, you have MDG, and you can distribute that content. For example, if you have Siebel for CRM, uh, but SAP for order to cash, you know, you can distribute customer information to Siebel, and that's why that data model and extending the data model is so important uh, in MDG, one of, the, one of the key things we talked about earlier. So ECC becomes your repository with SAP MDG. Is the tool also overseeing or governing data to and from CRM? Is the tool overseeing and creating? Yes. So it's, it's, it's part of the uh, SAP architecture written in ABAP. And it does have that integration to the business suite applications. So the data model it can actually come from SAP CRM. You can extend the data model, as, as, uh, as referenced, uh, with extensions or other content. Right? Uh, you can also incorporate unstructured content in that data model as well. Uh, but there's just a linkage to that enterprise content. And, and so the answer is, is yes, it, it, it does oversee that process for orchestration of content into CRM. And the data model is from SAP ECC. And if you have uh, extended that in any way or added other fields, uh, you, can, you can extend that data model in, EC, in, uh, in MDG to accommodate those uh, extensions. Can you give any insight on how MDG is different than MDM? And John, before you answer that question, I will just interject um, for the person that answered. If you want a very complete story on that, John did do a webinar on that exact subject several months ago. And you can go to utopiainc.com and under the tab Insights, all of our webinars are available there. Um, so you're looking for the one that is MDM versus MDG. But John, I'll let you address it as well. I just wanted to, to throw that out there. OK. So the question is the difference between MDM, NetWeaver MDM, and MDG. So uh, that's a very good question, something near and dear to my heart, because when I was at SAP, I was actually the, uh, one of the guys who helped launch MDM, um, NetWeaver MDM. OK. So real, real quick on that question. Um, Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm sorry to, 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 to go through this so quick. But um, think of MDM, right, historically as the ability to do consolidation and harmonization of data. So if, if data is the water in this slide that you see, you have a central repository for consolidation, right? That is the, one of the key use cases for NetWeaver MDM. It also has an outstanding product catalog capability, uh, which is very rich and supports rich content, like uh, uh, video or, or, or blobs or PDFs or MSDS materials. So MDM is uh, really designed for more heterogeneous landscapes that have 
uh, the need to consolidate and harmonize that, that data. MDG in this picture is, is really about that single record create with integrity, one drop at a time. And MDG also supports mass uploads. So you can put, you know, you acquire someone, you get an Excel spreadsheet from a third party, you can drop that right into MDG. And I talked about information steward, you can profile it, look for the flaws, and then MDG can apply the rules and the standards for the conversion. Uh, this example shows the water coming out of a faucet. This is MDG, the earlier question, ECC in the ABOP stack is the source of the data for SAP and non-SAP. And real quick, I'll show you this comparison um, uh, slide, if you can see this. Terry, MDM versus MDG? Yes. You can see my deck. So the delivered data model for MDM is a rough version of ECC. And the thinking was not everyone's going to have the ECC data model. MDG really designed on ABAP comes with that SAP. Uh, so it's an ABAP stack with MDG, a C++ stack with NetWeaver MDM. Uh, the workflow is more Visio with MDM. It's BRF plus, much more mature. They both provide validations. Uh, but MDG is much more out of the box. Like process centric, it's really a process centric application. It has validations and workflows and approvers. Really a lot of content out of the box with NetWeaver, with, with SAP MDG. Whereas MDM, NetWeaver MDM is more of a black box. You can do modeling, you know, like how do you want to build it? Um, and then you see the differences as it goes, goes through, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this matrix here. So there is a replay on that, MDM versus MDG. We're happy to send you the link. But key scenario, consolidation. MDM, NetWeaver MDM, yes, has consolidation. MDG, not yet. However, the next version of MDG will be running on the HANA stack, and they're going to be bringing forward that enablement of the data consolidation scenario with HANA. So there's a roadmap for it, but that's one of the biggest differences right now. Hopefully that helped. We implemented MDG last year. We're having difficulty reporting on how objects are changing, both in the current request to facilitate review and approval, and over time for audit purposes. The standard reports don't seem to address this need that seems fairly basic. We have to prepare this info manually. Any recommendations? Yes. So we, I view these types of webinars as like a community of service, and we're, we're here to help, right? So it, let me submit to you. Send me an email. My, my email is up on the screen. I will connect you with my delivery lead for MDG. His name is Bill Meinweiser, and he's a rock star. And between Bill and his team, we can set up a, a, a quick call, walk you through what the possible scenarios can be and any, any potential workarounds from our past experience. The other thing is we are very well aligned with SAP services and we're also aligned with SAP development and product management. So between our partnerships, if we can't solve the problem, we will direct you to the right folks um, who can and, and we're, we're often working with the development folks in Waldorf. So um, just send me a quick email, John F at Utopia Inc. Dot com, and I will uh, make that connection. And again, it's it's just sharing information, right? Okay. So, in your experience, John, what works best: a data organization structured by business process or by data object? Oh my! Um, so, so the it's business process first, and then the data object is modeled to support the business process. It's always about the process, in, in, in my opinion. Um, processes change. And as those processes change, a new compliance comes into bear, the data model has to change to fulfill the process. So uh, for me, it's about the business process, order to cash, right? procure to pay, inventory optimization, uh, supply chain, and then reverse engineer into that data model that has to meet the strict requirements of fulfilling and executing the business process.
and any analytics or any big data considerations down the line. So start with the process and make the process work, and then they'll say, this process doesn't work if I don't have this data. And if I don't have this data, then we need to get that data, and that's where this team comes in, your team comes in, to help the business enable their, their, their business processes and get it right. They will come to you, I promise you. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Um, John, can you talk a little bit about how you measure the quality or integrity of master data? Sure. So um, in this slide, we talked about establishing metrics. They're right here on the bottom, right? Conformity, completeness, consistency, availability, duplicates, etc. All of those metrics can be measured, right? And by the way, you can, you can also put an economic impact on the data. For example, if you've got duplicate vendors, chances are you're paying the same vendor twice, right? Chances are you run the risk of fraud, money laundering, and, and other risk of, uh, because you've got inactive or invalid vendors in, in the production system. If you're buying the same material for eight different prices from eight different places, you don't have the ability to uh, procure at an optimized level. So these metrics in red on the bottom of the slide here, right? Um, and I always look to tools like Information Steward, right, where you can really dig into the profiling and set thresholds on quality, right, uh, and then measure that consistently over time. So when you implement Information Steward, you want to have your metrics established. You want to understand the impact of, of, of not having that data. What does that do to the process? And there's actual calculations in Information Steward version 4.2, which is now generally available, I believe. Uh, we just ran a tech academy with SAP and their center of excellence and we were able to help people get a, you know, a, their hands-on experience in using Information Steward. We'd be happy to extend that to anybody here. It's cloud-based. You can, you can get your arms around Information Steward for 30 days or 60 days. But this screenshot, I think, is exemplary of that measurement of your metrics that you can manage against. And you can see where the problems are, for example, accuracy. You've got the field filled out, but it's not accurate. Tax ID is 9999X. What does that mean? Well, that means people don't pay their invoices. What does that mean? CFO is upset. So make the CFO happy, put out an invoice that's accurate, and measure that success. Uh, kind of a simple way to explain it, but in a nutshell, the metrics around the data are defined in Information Steward, and you can equate value to that, and you can measure them over time. Um, with MDG integrated with multiple ERP solutions, should the solution be built upon full standardization and harmonization of all the data elements, or partial standardization and harmonization, is that workable? In particular, the interest is in enterprise attributes, attributes such as material types, groups, etc. That is a question and a half. I recommend starting... In a, in a controlled environment, starting where you can prove vi business value, you can prove out the model, you can gain experiences. Um, there's been a lot of debate back and forth of, you know, is MDM universal? Is it only for a subset? Is it, you know, same thing with MDG. So, you know, my appreciation is we need to identify what's the problem you're trying to solve, and then how does that problem, how does that problem manifest itself today within your processes? Uh, from, from going back to the beginning of the slide deck, you know, small incremental projects showing business value. Show that data model design and consumption requirements. Uh, be able to map to, you know, which system, why, right, what's going to become the system of record. Understand the role. Th these kind of elements, I think, are, will, will lead you to the right conclusion. Uh, the problem is MDM, the process, MDG, the tool, it's massive, right? It's, it's only the core referential data that all of your systems and all of your reporting tools execute against, the master data. So it's important to get it right, but if you don't want to chew off too much and have this colossal program, 
that tries to cure world hunger when, when frankly, all you need to do sometimes is just start with a sandwich. Again, send me an email, get my team involved, and, and, and throw out, you know, from their collective experience. But I would rather have my customers get success and then build on that success um, and then scale. Uh, to take too much in one bite can be, uh, can be a little rough sometimes. And, uh, and the goal is to showcase to the business and IT that this can be done, this is manageable, and here's our roadmap to get there. So hopefully, uh, hopefully with that, I didn't give you a it, it depends type of answer, but I would say start small, get value, get recognition, rinse, lather, and repeat, or lather, rinse, repeat. If you'd like to learn more about Utopia, by all means, visit our website, www.utopiainc.com. Take care, everyone, and thanks again.